revenge mission against IBC commissioners. When the Supreme Court made this contemptuous ruling on the 2022 presidential election, we said we strongly disagreed but accepted it in the interest of furthering the rule of law, stability, and healing of our nation. Since we made the, that concession, the Uda administration has proceeded on a path of impunity, witch hunt, and revenge. Their target has been the institutions and individuals the regime thinks did not dance enough to its tunes during the campaigns. The regime has also targeted those it believes it cannot trust to dance to the orders tune in 2022, 2027 elections. The Directorate of Criminal Investigations and Mr. George Kinoti were among the first victims. Now, the regime has trained its guns on the, on the four IABC commissioners that the Deputy Chairperson, Mrs. Juliana Cherera, and Commissioners Francis Madenge, Irene Masit, and Justice Nyangaya expressed, who expressed their reservations over the process that led to the declaration of William Ruto as President. A process whose outcome is predetermined is already underway at the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee of the National Assembly. And as you can see, we have just come from uh, the proceedings of that committee. The four commissioners are supposed to appear before the, this committee, be found guilty, and be made to appear before a tribunal to be set up by Mr. Ruto that will confirm their guilt. They will then be thrown out of the IEBC. This revenge mission of selective injustice is being streamrolled by none other than the speakers of the National Assembly and the Senate and Mr. William Ruto. This selective injustice against the four commissioners takes place despite the existence of other petitions seeking the removal of Wafula Chebukati, Abdi Gulie, and Boya Molu as commissioners of the IABC. The criminal Ruto stooges at the IABC are being protected and rewarded, while those who fought for integrity of our elections are being punished. A petition by Mr. Milton Nyakundi Oriku, dated 19th September 2022, against the three that is Chebukati, Gulie, and Molu, was received at the main records unit of the Senate on the 28th of September 2022. To date, it has not been tabled before the Senate. Another petition, dated 17th October 2022, was received at the National Assembly's main records unit on the 25th of October 2022. To date, that petition has also not been brought before the National Assembly, even as the same institution begins to grill Mrs. Charera and her colleagues. Since the conclusion of the 2022 election cycle, we have done our best to give Ruto time and space to heal and unite our land. We have given so much space that a section of Kenyans think we have given up the fight. Unfortunately, Ruto too seems to think that we have surrendered. Instead of healing the land, however, all we see is a leadership that is extremely keen to deepen and widen the bitter partisan divide that existed during the campaigns and even open new wounds. As the country faces monumental challenges, the leadership is consumed with exacting revenge 
and laying ground for stealing of elections in 2027. That is what the case against Terera and her team is about. The Muscatiers, that is Chebukati, Molu, and Guliye, have sworn not to hand over to Mrs. Cherera and her team. That is why there is a rush on the four commissioners to ensure Chebukati has no one to hand over to come January. The Ruta administration supports this conspiracy because it wants to pick a set of user-friendly commissioners to complete the capture of IBC for the 2027 elections. And even the law, the regulation that was agreed upon on how to select a panel that will interview and recommend the new commissioners is also being amended. We are witnessing a swift, steady and dangerous reemergence of capture of institutions by the executive. The judiciary was the first to willingly give in, begin, give in to Ruto. A struggle is underway at the IBC, pitting Chebukati and his team who have surrendered to order against those who want to ensure integrity of the institution. The capture is now being extended to our two houses of parliament. Swiftly, Kenyans are being turned into passive bystanders in their affairs with grave implications for our unity, our stability, and governance as a nation. The root administration is taking us back to the state of affairs uh, last witnessed in the Nyayo regime of the 1980s. This kind of impunity, selective injustice and capture of institutions will have grave consequences. We are here to sound a warning. No one should lie to this regime that we will sit back and watch a return of the new regime by another name. And I want to repeat, we want to warn this regime that we will not sit back and watch a return of the new regime by another name. If deepening and widening the divisions among Kenyans is what the Uda regime wants, we will only be too happy to help them along that path. The injustice being inflicted on the IBC commissioners, if it, it proceeds as kindly conceived, will mark the beginning of a massive push, pushback against the Ruto and those who think like him, by the people of Kenya. We will openly and robustly lead that push, pushback. We call on our houses of parliament to be guarantors of the rule of law and justice in the country and stop being enablers of the constitutional revenge, revenge mission they have been deployed on against the four commissioners. The mission